and happy Sunday. Man, we always talk about this thing called faith. Well, what is faith? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Do you trust God with things that are coming soon? Do you trust God to provide for you and your family? Do you trust God with your future? These are all big things, but if you have faith, faith that Jesus will provide everything for you, faith that Jesus will lead the way for you, well, then that will be amazing. For today's worship, let's pray for this gift of faith, that Jesus will come and give us the spirit to trust him more and more. Let's do that. Are you ready? Let's go! I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi friends, my name is Pastor Diana, and today's story, it's a good one. But before we start, we're going to need Bible Boy for this one. So, Bible Boy! Hi, I'm Bible Boy, and I'm going to read the Bible verse for you guys today. 1 Kings 4, verse 21. And Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. These countries brought tribute, and Solomon subjects all his life. 1 Kings 4, verse 21. Wow, Mateo, thank you so much for reading today's message. And now in today's story, when King David was super old, he made his son Solomon the next king of Israel. And Solomon loved God, and he always did what was right. One night when Solomon was sleeping, God is going to appear to Solomon in a dream and say, Solomon, I want you to ask me for something, anything, whatever you want, I will give to you. Friends, if you were the king or queen of a country and God told you he would give you anything or just one thing, what would you ask for? Money? Power? Hmm. Well, in today's story, Solomon answered, Lord, you were always very kind to my father David, and now you've been very kind to me by making me king. But God, being a king is a very big job. And if I can ask you for one thing, I would ask you for wisdom. Friends, what is wisdom? Well, wisdom is being smart enough to make the right decision and do the right thing that God wants us to do. You see, God was very happy with Solomon because he asked for wisdom. God said, Solomon, you could have been selfish. You could have asked me to make you rich or to help you live a long time or help you defeat your enemies. But instead, you asked for the right thing and you asked for wisdom. Now, as a reward, I'm going to give you wisdom, gold, a long life, and I'm going to help you defeat your enemies. So basically, Solomon got more than one wish. So Solomon became the richest, the wisest, king that there ever was. He always made the right decision and kings and queens from other countries would even come to learn from Solomon. In our story today, we're going to see what he's going to do. What he's going to do is he's going to take the Ark of Covenant, which was a very special box made from gold. And this is the box that was made during the time of Moses. And inside the Ark of Covenant was two tablets of stone, which was written the Ten Commandments. And ever since the time of Moses, the Ark of Covenant has always been kept in a very special tent called the Tabernacle. The Tabernacle was a place where the priests came to offer sacrifices and worship the Lord. And all of the people Israel knew that the Tabernacle was a special place for God. 
You see, the tabernacle and the Ark of Covenant had been moved from place to place because the Israelites moved from place to place. And now King David thought he would build a beautiful building or a temple to the Lord. He thought that the Ark of Covenant should be kept in a building, not in a tent. And that way, it would always stay in one place instead of being moved around over and over. But the Lord did not want King David to build the temple. He wanted David, son Solomon, to build it. And so when King David died, Solomon became the new king. And so King Solomon made a lot of plans for this temple. And the temple he built was very special. It was made of a special stone on the outside and cedar wood on the inside. You see, the cedar wood walls had beautiful carvings of angels, palm trees, and flowers on them. And the floor of the temple was made of solid gold because Solomon had a lot of it. And there were two main rooms. The biggest room was called the holy place and only the priests can go in there. And there was also a smaller room with gold walls called the most holy place. And only the high priest can go into the most holy place. And inside the rooms, there were two huge angels carved from olive wood. Their wings stretched from one side of the room to the other side. And Solomon even had these angel statues covered with gold. All of these beautiful gold and the beautiful carvings would show how wonderful and beautiful our God was. It took thousands of workers for seven years to build the temple. And when the temple was finished, Solomon sent for the priest to go get the Ark of Covenant and all of the very special furniture that had once been in the tabernacle tent. The priest put the Ark inside the most holy place inside the new temple. They also placed all of the special furnitures inside of the temple. There were a special lampstand, a table, an incense altar, and many other things. You see, when the ark and the special furniture were placed inside of the temple, a huge cloud filled the most holy place. The cloud was so thick that the priests could not even see enough to do their jobs. Everyone knew that the presence of the Lord was in the temple. And Solomon invited all of the people to come to the temple for a very special dedication. The celebration for the temple lasted two weeks, and there were many speeches and many special prayers. And finally, Solomon had told all of the people, it's time to go home. And everyone left. And the Lord spoke to Solomon and said this, I am very, very pleased with the temple that you have built for me, Solomon. Just remember one thing. The temple is beautiful and everyone will come to think of me when they come here. And as long as you and your people obey me and follow my teachings, then the temple will be a wonderful place. But if you or your people disobey me, then all of the gold and the beautiful carvings will be worth nothing. You see, King Solomon promised the Lord that he would always follow him. And Solomon understood that it didn't matter how beautiful the temple is. If God was not inside of the temple, then it didn't matter how beautiful it was or what was inside of it. The temple was nothing without God. You see, Solomon was a very wise king and God gave him so much wisdom that he even wrote the book of Proverbs. You see, Solomon loved God with all of his heart. However, after Solomon had been a king for many, many years, he forgot to put God first. And Solomon started to love and worship other things more than he loved God. And this meant that God, <laughs> that Solomon did not love God with anything anymore. And so what happened? It divided God's heart. God had to punish Solomon for forgetting that God should be number one in his life. You see, God wants us to only worship Him. Never forget that God is number one in our lives and that's the only person who deserves our whole heart and deserves all of our worship. So, how does God punish Solomon? Well, He did this by dividing Israel and taking most of the kingdom away from Solomon and his family. And here's how it happened. A man named Jeroboam, he's going to rebel against King Solomon. And that means that he wanted to be king instead of Solomon or anyone in his family. 
So one day Jeroboam was walking in the country and he met a prophet and this prophet had a message for Jeroboam from God. He took his cloth and he tore it into 12 pieces. He gave 10 pieces of cloth or the pieces that he ripped to Jeroboam. And he told him that God said that Jeroboam would have 10 of the tribes of Israel and the rest of the Israel will be given to Solomon and his family. So how many is 12 minus 10? Two. You see, Solomon was punished because he did not obey God. Friends, what does it mean to obey? Hmm. Well, think of a time whenever your parents asked you to do something and you did not obey them. Friends, what happened? What was the consequences? You see, disobedience can sometimes hurt us. For example, I told my kids not to eat too much sweet. When they disobey me, their tummies are gonna hurt because they ate too much sweets. Or the other day, during dinner time, I told them not to run around. Instead, they were climbing off the table and what happened? They fell. And there was also this other time that we were at church and I told them to be quiet. But instead, they were screaming and being loud and they yelled in church and they got in trouble by one of the elders. You see, friends, you have to obey your parents because they love you and they know what's good for you and they know what's best. We have to obey God even though we don't want to sometime because God loves us and He always wants us to obey Him because He is God and He knows what's best for us. Wow. At first, we thought Solomon was a very good king. He was wise, he made the right decisions. Even when God asked him what he wanted, he said the right thing. But no, he's not. He's not the perfect king. Remember I said his heart, he loved God at first, but after many years, his heart started to love other things that was not God. Hmm. Solomon actually had many other wives, many other loves besides God and he even started to worship idols. Friends, how sad is this? That true King Solomon had fallen. You see, friends, this story reminds us that there is no perfect king, not King Saul, not King David, and surely not the man who built the temple, King Solomon. The only perfect king is our Lord Jesus. He is the one that sits at the right hand of God, and He is the most ultimate King who never lets us down. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You so much for Your special message today. Thank You for reminding us that there is no King like You. Many of the kings of Israel and even many of the judges have fallen, but not You, God. You never let us down. You're always good and perfect. So thank you for being this king to us. Help us to worship only the one true and living king, you, and not to be like King Solomon and worship other things. May our hearts only be with you, and may we only worship you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey friends, what did you guys think about today's message? Hmm, pretty sad. King Solomon, he made a lot of mistakes. He was not a great king at the end. And even the judges and kings all failed. But the Israelites, they should have waited for the true and right king, Jesus, who we know will come many, many years later. I pray my friends at home will always keep their heart on God and always worshiping only God. Amen? Bye, guys! Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. King David's reign had come to an end, and Israel was ready for a new king. God told the priest Zadok and the prophet Nathan to go to David's son Solomon and anoint him king over all Israel. Solomon was very happy to be king. After he was crowned, he went to worship the Lord. He offered hundreds of sacrifices to show God how much he loved him. That night, as the exhausted King Solomon fell into a deep sleep, he had a dream. 
God gave him a message in the dream. Solomon, whatever you want, I'll give it to you, God said. God wanted to bless King Solomon because God knew that the people of Israel needed a good king that loved the Lord. Solomon thought about the dream and knew exactly what to ask God. He did not need any more money or possessions. Instead, as the leader of a great people, he needed wisdom. God answered his prayer, and Solomon became the wisest man in the world. In addition to making him wise, God also made him very rich and honorable. Solomon's first great job was to build the new temple. This temple was one of the most beautiful and expensive buildings in the world. Solomon ordered precious wood, valuable stone, much gold, silver, and fine cloth. The new temple would be a marvel of beauty because it was the house of God. Seven years later, when the temple was finally finished, Everyone in Israel came to the celebration. They offered thousands of sacrifices, prayed long prayers, and sang many songs. God was very happy and filled the temple with the light of His glory. The people praised God with all their hearts. But something sad happened to Solomon. Solomon was so rich and could have anything his heart desired. What he desired more than anything else was wives. So Solomon got them, hundreds of them. He had 1,000 women that he treated as his wives. Solomon disobeyed God, as God said that a king should only have one wife. These new wives came from all over the world. They did not know the one true God and worshipped false idols. They turned Solomon's heart away from God, and soon Solomon started praying to these false gods as well. Disobedience became prevalent, and soon God's blessing on Solomon would be revoked. God punished Solomon and told him that his kingdom would be split in two. After Solomon's reign, his son would be rejected by the people of Israel. As wise as Solomon was, his wisdom, riches, and women brought him destruction, and God rejected him as king.
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, 